Hey, Coach, you've got a fantastic episode this week. Tom Cummings, who is the offensive coordinator at Travis Rest High School down in South Carolina. Tom is an elite football mind, and he is going to teach us uh, three or four different ways that his team has run speed option over the years. Really great episode. I hope you really enjoy it. Hey, coaches. If you want to learn a simple, reproducible, proven air raid system, one with 25 years of experience and track record behind it, then please check out Air Raid High School Edition Bundle on CoachTube. There is a link in the comments below this video. Thank you. Hey coaches, we've got a fantastic guest tonight. Tom Cummings is the offensive coordinator at Traveler's Rest High School in South Carolina. That is in the Greenville area. And I found out the Greenville area is a super cool, that's a cool town. And, and Coach is an elite football mind. We met uh, about two or three years ago at a clinic. Actually, it was me, you, and Hal Mummy sitting at a table. And you yep. started sharing your RPO stuff. You do a great job with RPO. I actually stole some of your stuff from that clinic. And, uh, and today, tonight, you're going to teach us uh, how you guys run speed option. And buddy, I, pre I wanted to get you on here before, but you, you ended up having a, a couple babies on me and been a little bit busy lately, but you, you finally took some time and uh, I sure I'm excited to have you on here, man. I appreciate you coming on and doing this. Hey coach, I appreciate it, man. Uh, I've wanted to get on here for a while. In fact, I think it was like right after we met the first time that I had uh, baby number one and we've gotten a baby number two on the way here in about a month. So I I'm excited to do it, man. I'm a big fan of the channel, subscribe, watch all your videos. So. It's awesome to come on here and talk some ball. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. And I found out you're a Penn State guy. Oh, yeah. I have a little – I have a – my cousin was John Huffnagel, so way back in the day with John Capaletti and all that bunch, he was he was a Penn State guy. So I, I always like Penn State guys. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, buddy, and just let you uh, share your screen and coach us up. You're, you're showing us a couple different ways you guys run speed option, and you promised me one of them's so simple even I can do it. Oh, coach, you can do all this, man. All right, so let me pull up my presentation here. Um, so I'm the OC and uh, coach receivers too at Travelers Rest High School right outside Greenville, South Carolina. I just wanted to throw my Twitter on there. If any coaches are listening and want to get a hold of me, feel free. I uh, love to talk ball. Um, love to see what you guys do and probably pick your brain and get something from you guys as well. Um, so what I wanted to do, talk speed option, um, I, we're mainly um, a counter inside zone team, um, but speed option is kind of one of the secondary plays, and, and we'll talk about how specifically we use it against what kind of looks um, and exactly how we block that. So um, one of the, the big things, one of the big reasons why I like speed option is that it really is inexpensive. Um, the whole idea of being in the air raid, maximizing reps and cost benefit analysis it is not a new play for us. Um, it is a tag to an existing run scheme that we run, um, not a new play. And we can run a bunch of different schemes with it. Um, right now, we're actually running off inside zone, which sounds kind of weird. Um, so all we're doing is we're taking whatever inside zone is. So if it's 30 or 31 or whatever you want to call it, Arizona, Alabama, um, we're just adding a word to it. Uh, come up with a word with S or O or Spider-Man or orange or whatever you want to call it. So it's literally just a one word tag. Um, and really all we're talking to is we're talking to the people in the mesh, the quarterback, the running back, um, and we're talking to one of the tackles. And obviously both tackles need to learn it. Um, our right tackle in particular, more so, um, we tend to run it to the right side with the right-handed quarterback, um, just because as much as we throw it, we want to protect that right-hand shoulder. Um, we got to make sure we're running it both ways, um, but we definitely run it more right-handed. Um, also works because if we run it, we're running zone left, um, which helps the quarterback and we're opening up. Um, we run a lot of zone left and, and run our uh, RPOs off that stuff too. So um, really the only thing, the only time we rep it, um, we rep it uh, during mesh once a week. Quarterback and running backs will work their, their zone mesh. Um, they'll work all their mesh. And this is one of the ones that we throw in um, and we'll rep it during team periods. And that's really it. Um, the tackles need to learn their rule, but it, it's not real hard for them as well. Um, one of the other reasons I like it is you don't have to be great up front to run it. Um, we've had some um, average offensive lines. Um, we've had some, some good offensive linemen, but there have been some spots we've been weak. Um, really, you're relying on one key block to make this happen. And I'll kind of show that when we get into the blocking schemes. Um, it gets the ball on the edge of the defense. I'll even make the argument that if you put in your offense outside zone or outside zone pin and pull or whatever your outside zone scheme is, um, you actually could get rid of it. 
uh, we run speed option is kind of like our outside run play. So it might be a way to add a tag and get rid of one of your run plays. Um, and it's also an answer for teams that um, like to slant or overlay away from the back. Um, just like a lot of spread teams, we run offset. Um, so the back going across, um, you're going to get a lot more back going across. Uh, we'll run some same side runs, some pistol. Um, but you definitely have a tendency going across the formation. Um, so you might see some defensive coordinators that like to slant away from the back, or you might see that scrape exchange away from the back. So this is one of the answers to that. And it helps us kind of balance some of the tendencies. Um, as far as how we block it, I'm going to give you kind of a complicated answer, but it's going to work for your offense. And really what we're trying to do is take whatever you do and add it to it. Um, so what I mean by that is I've got four run schemes up here that, and we can run inside zone. We can run pin and pull. We can run outside zone. We can run counter. Um, it doesn't matter what you want to do. You can tag speed option to it. So the first real question, um, and I, I said reach or bash. Um, what I mean by that is you got to decide if we're running speed option right. Do we want to go ahead and block it to the right-hand side and then pitch off the other guy? Or do we want to go ahead and block to the left-hand side and then basically turn it into a bash scheme? And so bash is kind of one of those where the back's going away. So like if we want to run speed option right, a lot of times with bash, we'll run something to the left and then the quarterback and the running back are coming out the backside. So we're still reading that backside defense defense man, just like you would on like an inside zone look. So um, I went ahead and drew, drew these up. Uh, this is basically just four, two front. Um, we can run against various different fronts. So I just drew everything up against four, two, um, just straight outside zone is one of the ways you could run speed option, where basically you're going to reach. If there's anybody in that gap, you're going to take them defensive lineman. If not, we're going to climb the second level. Um, Kind of similar to that, we started kind of getting away from that a little bit. I like the pin and pull scheme as far as an outside scheme as well. Um, for any of you that are familiar, that's kind of the no Mazzoni thing um, where you're pinning if there's anybody in the gap. And if not, they're going to pull and get to the outside. Um, so I drew it against kind of a 4-2 where you got the open B gap. Um, but you can kind of run that against anything and, and the rule stays the same. Um, now on the bottom two, this is your kind of your bash look. So what I'm running down here, the bottom here, I'm basically running zone left speed option right. Okay, so this would be if you wanna call zone left 31, um, running zone left, speed option right. Um, and then also kind of your counter look, uh, your GT, I know it's very popular. In fact, that's probably our best run play is counter. Um, it's, it's one of the ways you could run speed option. Um, so when I'm talking about bash, we're coming out the backside and kind of the key, and you'll see this on film, is we've gotta to get to this backside inside linebacker. Um, and so what we've done as far as the bash schemes, We've actually done kind of a freeze look. So the mesh from the quarterback and the running back is going to look a little bit different on film. So the quarterback is going to kind of hand that and kind of ride just like he would on inside zone or counter. The running back is actually going to take one step to the quarterback. He's going to open up in the mesh. So it's going to look like we're running just straight inside zone for the first step or two. It's looking like we're coming downhill, which will, what will happen is these backers are going to trigger downhill instead of horizontally which makes a lot easier block for that tackle. So he's going to basically take one quick counter step. We teach him to kind of quickly transition and get into pitch relationship. Um, I would say the one that we probably use the least off speed option is this counter look. Um, and for the same reason I just mentioned, the key block here is this backside inside linebacker. If you're really doubling this front side tackle, this three technique to the backside, it's very difficult to try to get to that. Unless you're, you're playing teams that really key on these pullers, um, this would be one of the ways you could run it. If you've got somebody that's really key in those pullers and chasing them down from the backside, you could run the speed option with a bash look. I would say that the counter uh, option is probably the least uh, effective only because you're not going to be getting to this linebacker, this double to the backside on counter, which that backside linebacker is the, really the guy you got to get on speed option. So a couple of different ways we can block it. Um, I'm actually going to show you a bunch of these on film. Um, I've got basically everything on film except for uh, the counter look. Um, but I will tell you right now, the, the one I've gone to is this inside zone with the bash look. Um, I like it the most because the freeze, kind of the, the mesh with the quarterback, gets these linebackers triggering downhill and coming out the backside. Also, inside zones, uh, something that anybody can run. Um, so it's a very easy tag that can just add into the offense. Um, teaching points. We talked a lot about uh, several leads earlier. The play side tackle is key. Um, I hear a lot of teams that will say pitch off the end man on the line of scrimmage. Uh, in fact, that's how I was taught speed option. Um, 
but the end man line of scrimmage a lot of times changes. Um, so the rule that we teach for our play side tackle is that we're not blocking the C gap player. And by telling him that rule, it takes into account a lot of the different looks we get. Um, the tight front's becoming real popular right now with the four eyes. Um, so you got your four eye and then you've got that linebacker out in space. And if you don't account for that linebacker out in space, he's going to make all those tackles. Um, it's kind of like fool's gold trying to run in that box. And then that guy comes and makes all the plays. Well, if we've got a tight front, that four eye is a B gap player. So we're actually going to block that B gap player. Um, and then we're going to pitch off that overhang guy. Um, one of the common looks here in South Carolina, a lot of teams like to run the three, four, um, where they basically bring that will linebacker. That's becoming very popular down here. I'm not sure about North Carolina, um, but that three, four, where they're always bringing that backside heat. Uh, well, if you're bringing that three, four with the edge blitz, then you got your end slanting in the B gap. So as he comes down in the B gap, the tackles climbing, he sees that guy trying to cross his face. He's going to take him and we're going to go ahead and pitch off the blitz. Um, the key, though, like I said earlier, we got to get to that play side linebacker. How you do it depends on the scheme. Um, now, the rest of the offensive line, just blocking the run scheme, whether it's inside zone, outside zone, whatever it is. Now, a key coaching point for the rest of the guys um, on basically our inside zone or if we're running GT, we're liking to double those guys and really stay on double teams. But with speed option, we're quick to climb those linebackers. We don't want to stay on the double teams. We're not really, really worried too much about the down guys making the tackles other than the, the end, which we're going to pitch off. Um, we're more worried about the linebackers at the second level. So kind of coach your kids, your offense linemen. We've got to be quick to get to those linebackers, climb, which is different because they hear, um, they hear the normal run play. And if it's counter, we're really trying to double that three technique or inside zone, really trying to double that A-gap player. So this is a little bit different from that perspective. Uh, receiver wise we're just going to block man on um, unless we give a call to crack um, one of the reasons um, we would do that like if you're running um, this backside and trips a lot of times you're gonna get that guy locked on in man coverage um, so uh, sometimes crack might be a good option on that um, and just coaching point keep the feet moving uh, and the reason being on that I mean always you want to keep your feet moving but uh, you're not sure exactly where speed option is going to hit because if the quarterback kind of comes off that, in the pitch man, he sees that end kind of coming outside or coming to his outside, um, he's going to duck inside. So it could hit inside. Um, if we pitch the ball and get the perimeter, it could be way outside, could even get to the sideline. So the receivers really need to keep your feet moving. That's something we kind of stress with them. Um, quarterback, I mentioned this earlier with the mesh. This is specifically with the inside zone look. Um, my favorite way to run it is we're going to show the ball to the running back, and then we're going to attack the outside shoulder or pitch man. Uh, running back's going to jab step. He's going to open up pocket, look exactly like inside zone, counter, whatever you're doing. And then we're going to get in a pitch relationship. And we got to make sure we just quick jab step and get out there. If we don't do a quick jab step and get out there, uh, we're not going to get wide enough. And then the pitch man can play both guys. So a um, couple of, I guess, ideal looks um, and then problems in the situation. Um, we're trying to run this if we get linebackers that are lined up on or inside the guards. We don't like it necessarily if we get that um, linebacker that's kind of stacked on the tackle, like your 3-3 three, three stack look. Um, there are some answers to that. Uh, one of the answers we just talked about is you can crack that guy, and then we've got a good angle, and then we can get out to the other guy. Um, we like it when we got defensive linemen that are lined up inside or they're pinching inside. Um, so like a lot of times you'll see like bare fronts on the goal line, um, they're covered down, you'll see the tight front, guys that are tight inside. Well, they're inside, so they're giving us that outside run play. Um, we like it when we got numbers of perimeter. So if you got like trips and they're playing three over two, um, if there's no force player, a lot of times backside and trips, you won't have somebody over there if they're a, a four man front. Um, so we want we want to make sure that we're running it into good numbers um, or we know exactly kind of what we're doing on scheme. Um, so I'll mention a lot of stuff on on film where I know exactly what they're in as far as fronts and I know exactly what they're doing. A lot of this depends on what your team, the team that you're playing is doing as far as defense. Um, weak side and trips, I like it. Um, and the reason being, a lot of times teams will spin the field, um, which means there's no force player in the boundary. Um, also, you'll get man coverage, which man coverage is great if you're getting man coverage to the backside because then you can crack. You can crack on the linebacker if we're having problems getting to him. You can push crack to safety if you're going too high. Um, and it's really best to the open B gap, um, but really we're not too worried about the defensive lineman. It just kind of gives it an easier block for the, uh, the play side guard. Um, best away from the blitz. Um, if we're running into the blitz, we're just going to pitch off that guy. Um, so I like it uh, against all kinds of looks and I'll show you a bunch of stuff on film here. Um, I'll show you a couple different ways we've run it and, and kind of what we're thinking here. 
So um, let me go ahead and pull up some film here. Coach, can you see this? We good? Yeah, here? I got you. Hey, uh, okay. hit your hit your slow button when you're playing your film because it gets I got you, choppy man. sometimes. Okay. So um, the first couple of clips I'm going to show you, uh, the first three here are from this year. Um, and so the way we ran it this year is that kind of the inside zone with the bash look. Um, so what we're doing basically is the running back here is going to come across on the mesh. He's going to take the jab step and he's going to get back out. So it's going to make it look like inside zone. He's not coming this far. It's just a quick jab step and get back out. Um, and really what I want you to look at is look at this linebacker right here. Okay, He's the key. He's the guy we really got to get to. Watch his first step. He's going to come downhill here. Um, so let me go ahead and play this slowly. This is a um, – basically, this team is a kind of look we see a lot here, three to two in the box. You're going to see this wheel guy coming a lot off the backside. I'm trying to run it away from the blitz, which is why I'm running it to the trip side right here. We also knew that this team, this guy, they were slanting the field. This guy is a C-gap player. So based on my rule, this play side tackle is not blocking this guy. He's going to step down because we're up inside zone. He's going to climb to the backer right here. So just kind of show you see the one quick step. There's your jab. It's, it's really not even much of a mesh either. I would like the quarterback to kind of hold that ball out a little bit more here. Quick jab, attack his outside shoulder, get in the perimeter. Pretty good job out here. Uh, mirror drill. I'll show you. There's another receiver out here. Not exactly a great job. He's too high. We'd like to see him keep his feet moving. So we got to make sure we stay engaged because this could hit anywhere. So really, if you look at it again, kind of from the mesh, uh, one thing I want you to notice, look at the backside here. We talked about this earlier. This does not need to be uh, a bunch of guys that are 6'5 are and 300 up front. We don't do a real good job blocking anybody on the backside. We got one guy that we need to get to, and we don't really even get him. We get a piece of him, this play side linebacker, but it's enough to get the ball to the perimeter. And really, that's just inside zone for us with a one-word tag. That's all that is. All right, this right here, uh, kind of a, a wrinkle off this. Okay, this is basically we're running trips, FIB, trips in the boundary. Um, we've got a 3-2 team, so kind of something to know about these guys right here. Um, this guy, we knew they were kind of a tight front, or at least in the boundary. This guy is playing B-gap, which means this linebacker out here has to be playing C-gap. The fact that he's playing B gap, we know that we're going to lock on right here, and this is our pitch guy. However, the fact that we're running FIB and they don't really adjust to it particularly well, we've got a guy for this guy. So we're actually going to block this guy. Um, this really should be a double. Let me should kind of show you the next slide. They have it pulled up here. This should be a double here to the play side safety. We don't block it particularly well with the slot. Um, also, kind of looking here at the guards, we should be quicker to double to these backers here. So if you notice these two guards, we don't even get to the linebacker. We don't really double to the safety. We still get seven yards out of it. Quick mesh, coming up the backside, looking for the C-gap player. He really is pitching off a linebacker that we didn't get to. But there's nobody home there. So a little wrinkle off it. Well, we ran it in, into the boundary there, FIB. We messed around with that a little bit, and that's one of the things we do off it. Same clip. Show you a wide here. All right, so here's your four-man front. Okay, so you got four, two in the box. Now, one thing that I kind of wish I would have done, kind of looking at film, second guessing myself here, I know just based on where the safety is here on film, I know that this is locked on the backside. I probably should be push cracking right here as a tag off of that. Um, I'm not. So basically what we're doing here is we're reading the C-gap player, looking at what I got here. This end feels like he's a B-gap player. In fact, this team liked to kind of run the straight where he's slanting hard in here or scraping the backer to the outside. Here's a good answer to scrape. So he's going to lock on and we're going to pitch off that backer. Okay. Now we do a pretty good job of getting downhill here, attacking. He sees nobody there. Take off and go. Quarterback, we had this year, pretty good athlete, but he's definitely more of a passer than a runner. We're still getting nine yards at the backside here. Um, I want to show you this one, kind of an evolution of, I guess, me as a play caller. Um, in fact, the, the next couple clips I've got are from a couple years ago. So this right here, this quarterback, um, he's actually playing kind of a linebacker safety right now in college at uh, the Citadel. So it kind of tells you what kind of kid we had here. Um, but kind of your ideal 
quarterback to run speed option. He is a tough kid. He is not a uh, traditional quarterback, but he's tough and he's going to hit it downhill. Um, the way I'm blocking this, this is actually the first year uh, at, at TR, at Travis Rest High School. Um, this is straight inside zone. Um, and I realized after running it, kind of doing some studying in the offseason, I needed to fix it myself. So we're running straight inside zone here. Okay, so let me kind of play it slowly. This is our bash look, straight inside zone left. All right, he pitches off the end man. Notice the problem here. If you're running inside zone where you're not running the freeze, right, we're zoning away. We don't really have anybody for this backside linebacker. Now, he's slow in getting there, um, but you don't have anybody to account for him um, unless I had numbers where I could possibly run a, a, a receiver in there and kind of dig him out. Um, he doesn't make the play on this. He should. But that's kind of one of the reasons where if you're going to run it with a zone scheme, I really like the whole idea of run that freeze to try to get to that backside linebacker. He's the key guy. Let me see what I've got here. Uh, this is this is kind of the Noma zone way. So after that year, I kind of changed it. I went to some of the outside zone stuff. Um, so this is Noma zone, kind of your pin and pull look. All right. So what we're trying to do here, start with tackle. If the tackle has anybody in the B gap, he's going to pin. If he doesn't, he's going to pull. Okay, so he notices he feels like this guy's an A gap player. Um, in fact, it's not him making the call. We make a line call for this so there's no confusion. Um, he feels like there's nobody in the B gap. He's pulling to the outside, okay, which gives him a, a good uh, ability to get to this guy. Um, we're basically blocking down because of this guy in our gap. We feel like this guy is head on. The guard's going to take him. Center's going to pull. He's going to wrap for this backside backer. So this is kind of the front side look to this. Um, anybody that runs kind of a pin and pull scheme. Um, we are going right now. We are attacking the outside shoulder of this guy right here. Um, now, one thing you'll notice here, you'll see a minus two on this. This is actually a touchdown call back. Um, I like to put some good clips on here. I like to put some bad clips on here. Um, so we do some good things here. Um, but we inevitably get a penalty on this one. He's attacking, pitching off the end man. Um, really easy to get to this backer. Um, this is a pretty good player for us. Um, he actually made uh, north-south the year they canceled it. Really good player for us. Um, easy to kind of reach and get to that play side linebacker. He's got him sealed. Um, this should easily be a touchdown. He gets a little bit sloppy with the hand placement. You can kind of see it coming to the outside and gets called for the holding right here. Um, the guy that makes the play right there should have made the tackle is the safety actually coming there. See the corner coming in late. So, um, I guess one answer, if you're really concerned about this guy really late coming in, you could, with that receiver, kind of like come off slow and then kind of teach him MDM, most dangerous man. So as I come off, I see the safety triggering. I can play that guy. Um, you could also teach him to push crack so that he's not having to make that decision post that. Um, just run it kind of like a post. So that guy's that corner's going to go with him, and then you can get two for one on the safety. So this is one that should have been a touchdown got called back for us. This is basically our pin and pull scheme. Here's another one. Um, I want to show this for a particular reason. One of, the, one of the problems a lot of spread teams have is we get down to the goal line, and then all of a sudden we get this look. We get 4-3 against 10 personnel. We can block five. We can basically read a six, but what do we do if there's seven in the box? So I guess my first answer and kind of the one I like is let's throw the ball because we've got zero. Um, but we're on the one or two yard line here. So the only answer I really like against that seven man front or kind of that bare look or whatever you're seeing where they're all tight inside is speed option. Okay. So the way we're blocking this same thing, this is our pin and pull scheme. He's coming down because it's a B gap player. Um, he's coming down center is pulling. We are not going to block this end man. He's our pitch guy. And then what we're going to have basically what kind of looks like um, almost like a power read play. So it turns into a power read off this particular look. So he's going to basically attack downhill. He feels this guy coming outside. Notice that we've got one guy for this linebacker. Now he, he completely whiffs with him coming outside. This should be basically a walk-in. And he whiffs on this guy in the hole. But this is the definition of what we want as far as speed option from a quarterback. Once you make a decision, whatever it is, get downhill and lower your shoulder and get in. So good goal line run there to finish it off. Um, pretty good job. Uh, there's some decent clips up here. I would like a better position here, but a pretty good job taking the inside away, at least mirroring the guys on the outside. Doesn't need to be anything real physical. 
Uh, we teach a lot of mirror, slide, uh, hands replaced, stuff like that. Um, this is kind of a similar look to the last one, except instead of pin and pull, we're running straight outside zone. Um, so we're running basically speed option right. Everybody is reaching to the right. Um, this is about the only way I really like it against the three, three stack if you're not cracking. Okay, so you could push crack onto this guy um, or we can reach to the outside. So we're basically going to reach the whole way across. If there's somebody there, we're going to take them, the defensive lineman. If not, they're going to climb the backer. So as I start playing this here, you notice this probably should be a pretty good play right about here. Okay, because I've got a hat for a hat up top here and here. And I basically have my back one-on-one -on -one to the boundary of the safety. If I can get that, I'm happy, man. So we're pitching quickly off the end man line of scrimmage, trying to get him in space. Now we don't do a particular good job um, with this block right here um, and really this block right here, but we still get him out on the perimeter for gain of like five, six yards. Easy third down conversion. It's really a, a good third down call, uh, especially into the, the boundary like that, because a lot of the times you're seeing man, so especially in the backside, you can push crack. You've got him locked on. You've got teams that want to play man and cover down to the trip side. Um, so you got pretty good numbers in the boundary there. Got some, some film here, some uh, sound it looks like. All right, so I want to pull this up. Um, kind of the last clip I've got, and I really wish I had uh, a little bit more in front because I'm not sure exactly what this is um, as far as formation wise. Um, just kind of based on the depth of the tailback. What this might be here is this could either be some sort of like H back and pistol. Uh, this could be some sort of like two back with a pistol. Um, this could be something where I've got H back empty and orbit. You can really dress up speed option a lot of ways. Um, and I want to show you this clip for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, this is not executed well by the quarterback. Okay. He is, um, as I attack the perimeter here, he is pitching off nobody. Okay. He's pitching off air, as we like to say. This guy's blocked. He should keep going. But the whole idea, the whole kind of idea behind spread offenses, we're trying to get our guys in space. And ultimately, that's what it's about. And speed option is a great answer for that. Um, and so ultimately, even though we don't run it perfectly, even though this guy's pitching off nobody, the whole idea is get your athlete in space, give him the ball, let him go. And, and this is a great answer for that. That's, that's really inexpensive. Um, where I don't have to do a whole lot of, of changing things, I don't have to do a whole lot of investment. It's something I can run with inside zoner. I don't want, want to show you that clip at, at, at the end of him highlighting there, hot dogging. Um, but basically, you can run off anything um, that you run in run scheme, um, and, and you can block it, and you can block the five most dangerous guys and pick up, pitch off that other guy. We like to um, run it right now with that freeze look, inside zone look. We're pitching off that, um, that C-gap player, um, but you can run a, a number of different ways. So, um, Coach, that's all I got. Um, I wanted to show you a couple different ways you could run it, just kind of get you thinking, give you some answers. Um, I'm going to put my, um, my information up here again. Coaches, reach out to me if you all have any questions. Um, I'd love to talk ball with you. I'd love to see what you all do. Um, but hopefully, whether you run inside zone or counter or outside zone, you run some of those schemes. It's something that we could very easily put into our offense where we don't have to waste a bunch of reps and a bunch of time and, and try to invent a new play. So, um, Coach, I don't know if you got any questions for me. Uh, if there's anything you want to go over. Yeah, number one, fantastic. Uh, I love that freeze. I love the freeze look. What? Uh, let's just talk pitch mechanics because obviously, did you say you're only really working pitch one day a week with your quarterback? We're working it one day in quarterback, running back, mesh, and that's it. Okay, so what, what mechanics do you use for the actual option pitch? And how so much what, do you worry about it? Uh, not a whole lot, to be honest with you. Um, it's not our main run scheme, um, but what we're teaching him is just we're going to take a quick mesh and we're going to attack the outside shoulder of, of the C gap player in man line of scrimmage. Obviously, if they come inside, we're going to pitch off the, the uh, outside guy, the blitz, the walk up, um, but we're attacking downhill. We're getting downhill on that. It is the running back run back's job to quick counter step, and then he's got to get in pitch relationship. We're still doing five by two. I'm slightly behind the quarterback so you can pitch it and get him out in space. But uh, for the running back to get out there on that pitch relationship, he's got to get a quick jab, jab step, and then he's got to make a quick transition and get out there. So uh, especially the freeze, if you're running just your straight uh, where you're reaching, um, it's a little bit easier for the running back to get out there. In fact, sometimes he could even overrun them. Um, but, but it's real easy to get in pitch relationship from the, from the offset if you're just going to reach it.
How about the actual pitch itself? Are you are you thumb down? Are you basketball? What what kind we're of? We're thumb down. Um, I, I'll let the quarterback kind of uh, do what he's comfortable with. Okay. Um, we're, we're typically thumb down. We're trying to teach him to kind of look it in to the to the pitch guy. Um, he's he's a basketball guy also. He's a point guard, so he's kind of used to that no look pass. As long as he gets it there, and, and just practicing it enough at practice, um, he's pretty good with his eyes. Even though if he's not exactly on the target. Um, we're, we're thumb down. We're trying to look it in there. But if, if he's doing something else a little bit, as long as he's comfortable with it, I, I'm not going to overcoach that, man. And how much uh, how much are you teaching, you know, falling away after the pitch? Are you focused on that at all? Or is it just not that big a play where you even worry about that? Uh, not really falling away from the pitch. And, and really, that's why I like to run it to the right-hand side. As long as we're protecting that right arm, we're good, man, because we're, we're chucking it 45, 50 times a game if, if I had my uh, – I had my choice. So um, we're throwing a good bit. So I like to run at the right hand side. Um, the one we have right now run that kind of the freeze look. He's probably pretty good as far as getting it out early enough or he's not taking too many hits at all. So um, he's smart about that. How many, give me a guesstimate. How many times do you run some version of speed option, a game or a season? Uh, not enough uh, is the answer, after, especially after looking at these clips. Uh, not enough. Um, it, it's really good answer against that um, that look where they're kind of slanting away from the back. Um, I would say we probably run about three times a game. Okay. All right. A lot of times goal line, third down, kind of your keys. You don't want to do it too much. Um, and it is something where you got to rep it because otherwise the ball's on the ground. Um, so, like, I, I want to run it in a situation where I want to use it. Um, it's kind of like one of your tags in your pass game. Uh, I want to use that in a certain situation where I know I can get the most out of it or that two-point play. So we run it probably like three times a game, three, four times a game. Awesome. Awesome. Well, man, you did a fantastic job. I wish I would have got you on here uh, a long time ago, but you had a good excuse. I couldn't, I couldn't buck you on it. Well, you know how uh, to get a hold of me now. So I, I, do, I do. I'm going to get you back on here. Man. I, wa I want you to come back and do your RPO stuff because you are a, a genius at that stuff. But, buddy, I sure do appreciate you. I appreciate it, Coach.